In the last video, we introduced the binomial distribution uh, as the uh, distribution describing a process where you have two possible outcomes, uh, let's say A and B, with a respective probability of P and one minus P. And we we're interested in knowing the probability of there being X occurrences of uh, outcome A out of N possible trials of some uh, random experiment. In this video, we're going to consider the process of uh, where the number of trials in our experiment gets very, very large or tends to infinity and the probability of success in each trial tends to zero. So the probability of success becomes very, very small, but in such a way that the product of the number of trials and the probability of success is equal to a constant, which we're going to call lambda. And we're going to start from the probability mass function of the binomial distribution and see what happens when we incorporate uh, these new considerations. So as n goes to infinity, we'll first consider these two factorial terms. In general, before incorporating the fact that n gets very, very large, this is equivalent to n times n minus one all the way to n minus x plus one. And as n goes to infinity, n remains n. Since n is very large, n, there's not much difference between n and n minus one. So we can say that n minus one is about equal to n. Similarly for the term over here, which would be n minus two. There's not that much difference between a very large n and a very large n minus two. So this is again equivalent to that and so on, carrying out the same process. So difference between a very large n and n minus x plus one. It's again, not much different from n. So in the limit when n goes to infinity, this factor tends to n to the power of x. We'll next consider what happens to this factor over here, the one minus p to the power of n minus x. So now we incorporate both considerations. Number of trials gets very large and the probability of success in any one trial gets very, very small in such a way that their product is equal to a constant. And then this is, this is without incorporating any of these considerations, this is just normal algebra. So if you have a negative exponent, you can put that factor in the denominator. Now we can rewrite n as lambda over p. This is the same thing as saying n is equal to lambda over p. And we still have the one minus p to the x over here. And uh, an important result that we need is when you have, when you look at this term in the numerator, as P gets very, very small, this gets very small and the power gets very large. So this is equivalent 
to e to the minus lambda. And this is an alternative definition, if you will, of the uh, natural exponent that you may have seen in, uh, in your calculus class, for example. Similarly, we can incorporate p getting very small to determine the numerator. This uh, essentially becomes one to the x as p becomes very large. One minus p is basically the same as one and this is just equal to one. So this leaves us with our term here, one minus p to the n minus x is approximately equal to e to the minus lambda. So combining these two results, again, we started out with this probability mass function. We got rid of these two terms and said that that was about equal to n to the power of x. We still have our x factorial over here. We have our p of x from over here. And we said that one minus p to the n minus x was about equal to e to the minus lambda. We have different bases with the same exponent here, so we can combine that into one term. But we had said that n times p is equal to our constant lambda over here. This is e lambda to the x, e minus lambda over x factorial. So in the limit where the number of trials gets very large and the probability of success becomes very small, our uh, probability mass function for a binomial distribution is simplified to this new probability mass function. And uh, this describes a new distribution known as the Poisson distribution which is often used, uh, for example, when you're trying to count things, the probability of uh, getting a certain number in your counts. So this is the probability mass function of a new distribution called the Poisson distribution. So let me just rewrite that here. Okay, so this tells us the probability that a random variable is equal to some value little x. And some important properties of this distribution. So if a random variable is distributed according to a Poisson distribution, this constant lambda is the parameter of our distribution. Then the expectation value is equal to lambda. So Lambda gives us the average, or the mean of the process that we're considering. And the variance is also equal to Lambda. So a Poisson distribution has this very important property where its variance is equal to its mean. 
And this is often used in practice to um, detect the, the occurrence of a, of a Poisson distribution describing a certain process. So in the next video, we're going to uh, go through an example which shows how well this approximation actually works in practice uh, through a, a specific numerical example.